So I recently started a new job, and, and one of the things that you have to go through any time that you start up with a new company is the whole onboarding process. Um, and I, I, you know, some companies do it better than others, but I've never worked for a company that did a great job with with onboarding uh, overall. You know, there, there's, uh, you know, you, you've got to set up all the user accounts, their permissions, their accesses, you know, get them their equipment. Um, and get all that in place. And, and a lot of times, you know, a new employee may spend uh, anywhere from, you know, a couple of days to several weeks before they can do anything uh, as part of the new job. Uh, and one of the things that uh, the Power Automate can do is to help you to automate a lot of those processes to make it a lot easier. Uh, several of the places that I've worked previously, I was able to, uh, you know, work with uh, things like Power Automate, Logic Apps, uh, you know, Data Factory, to help automate a, a bunch of those uh, onboarding processes for new employees. And today I'm going to show you uh, a couple of things that you could do with uh, with the Access, uh, or sorry, with the uh, Entra ID um, connector for Power Automate to help you automate some of those processes for bringing on new employees. So let's jump over to the browser and just kind of walk through. Kind of walk through uh, some of the features that are available in Entra ID uh, with uh, with Power Automate. So, you know, here we've got the information about the uh, Entra ID connector. As you can see, it's available for Logic Apps, Power Apps, Power Automate, Copilot Studio, uh, and there are a couple of things to to remember. So, the user that is going to be given access to this connector has to have uh, several administrator permissions in order to be able to do or see anything. Um, so you need the group read write all, user read write all, and directory read write all uh, into into the uh, Entra ID uh, um, domain. Um, so you know, obviously, it's there are a number of features that aren't available through the connector uh, that that you could potentially do through Entra ID, um, but you can uh, you can use Graph uh, you know, in an HTTP connect connector automate some of those other things that you might not be able to do through the, the built-in connector here. There are some other things to remember. Um, one is the connector doesn't support custom attributes, uh, you know, and depending on, on your setup for uh, Entra ID or you know, Azure ID as it used to be called, uh, you may or may not need that. Uh, it doesn't support mail enabled security groups. Um, and there are a couple other minor things here that, uh, that uh, you have to keep in mind as, as you're working with this connector. Um, but, you know, it, it does a lot of the basic stuff really well, um, you know, setting up groups, uh, adding users, you know, uh, enabling users, that kind of thing. So let's look at some of the actions that are available here. So, you know, you've got add user to a group, you can assign a manager, you can check whether a member is part of a given group, um, you can create group, uh, you can create an Office 365 group, create a security group, create a user, you can get group, get group members. Um, get groups of a user, uh, uh, get details for a user. Um, you can uh, invalidate all the refresh tokens for a user. So that's a good one. Uh, on the other end, you know, if you're offboarding somebody, you can automate the process. Say, you know, somebody goes in there and, uh, and you know, gets terminated or, or gets laid off or whatever it might be. Somebody in HR can go ahead and click a button and boom, their access, you know, gets cut off, you know, because it cuts off the refresh tokens. Uh, you can remove a member from a group and update a user. Um, one of the things to remember about groups and user IDs is you cannot search through this connector, which I think is, is probably the biggest uh, downside of this connector is you can't do any searching. You have to know the IDs that you're working with um, in order to get any details. Now, you can sometimes kind of use that to, to work your way and find some IDs that you weren't uh, doing. So for instance, if you know a user ID and you don't know the groups, you can you know get the, the groups for that user and then get some group IDs that way. But in general, you have to know what those group IDs are um, in order to be able to do anything with that. And you know, that's, that's not necessarily a, a killer. You can still automate a great many things, um, but you know that, that is one of the hangups uh, as far as that goes. So uh, let's uh, just go over here. I'll just show you a quick tenant here. I've got this tenant that I use for demos. Um, you can see I've only got two users here. And what we're going to do is we're going to automate the process of uh, adding um, some new users to that te tenant and uh, giving them some details. 
Um, <coughs> excuse me. So, you know, the data can come in from anywhere. So here we've got our flow and power automate. Uh, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to walk through. So I've got a set of data here uh, for three new users. Um, I'm going to set up a couple of variables to work with, and I'll walk through those here. For each of those, I'm going to get the information about the user from the data set. I'm going to create a user in Entra ID. I'm going to add that user to the uh, all, all employees group. And then I'm going to get the information about that group after I've added those three employees. I'm going to get the group about get the details about the group and get the members of the group. So just some simple things that you might want to be able to do with Entra ID uh, in this uh, particular circumstance. So you can see here, um, you know, each of the users I've, I've passing as date uh, JSON data. You can pass it, and you know, however you get that data, it might be a feed from from. Uh, you know, your HR system, it might be a, a CSV file. However you get that data into Power Automate really doesn't matter. Um, you just have to be able to parse that data, which you can do from any number of different sources. So in this particular case, I've got some JSON data for three new users. For each of those, I've got, you know, some fake information, fake name, um, uh, you know, what their title is, what their you know phone number is, what their location is, who their manager is, you know, the, the email address of their manager. Um, in these particular cases, you know, I've, I've set preferred for two or for one of them, not for the other two. Uh, you can see each of them has, you know, a different job title, different phone number, different location, different name, and so on and so forth. They're all set to the same manager. However you get that data in, it really doesn't matter, but those are the basic details that you need for each of those. Uh, as far as the variables that we're going to do, um, I've got this. Uh, uh, actually, this one I don't use. This is the one that I use, so group ID. So I've set up, you know, this uh, fake group ID. Uh, temporary in, in this tenant. Um, one of the tricky things, if you pay, copy and paste the group ID in to uh, the actual um, like get group down here, if I were to copy and paste it in here, for some reason it adds like a, a, a line, a line feed, new line, like slash n, and you can't get rid of it. It's just a quirk of the user interface. Um, so what I have to do is, is put it into a variable and then do trim to cut off that, that white space stuff. Uh, cause if you have any extra characters at all, um, Entra IDs endpoints throw a fit and, and they won't work. But anyway, just a little kind of gotcha to keep track of as you're working with stuff. So for each of these users, um, I'm going to, you know, parse the JSON data that's coming in and then I'm going to call this create user endpoint. And what that'll do is it'll it'll create uh, unset them all as disabled. You can set them either as enabled or disabled when you create these new accounts. I'm going to give it a display name, give it the mail nickname, set up a temporary password for each of them. Um, you know, set up the user principal name, so adding them to the domain. Uh, give them a given name, a surname, uh, and then there's some optional data that you can show for each of them. Um, you can add like a business phone. You can add their preferred language, uh, department, job title, mobile phone, office location. So I'm adding those four things, but not you know the language or the uh, the business phone number for any of them. And then for each of those users, I'm going to add them to the um, uh, to this group that I, I've got over here. And if I go over and I look at my groups, um, There we go. So I've got this all company group um, that I'm going to add them to in this uh, uh, demo tenant that I'm using. Uh, and then we'll go back and, and look at that here after it runs. Uh, now, obviously, if I was doing a full, um, there we go, users, go back to users. If I was doing a full flow, you know, I'd always want to put in some error checking. So first I would do like get user to see if the user exists already, because uh, you don't want to try to create duplicate users. Uh, another gotcha that you commonly run into is, you know, if you're using, for instance, in this case, I'm using just the, the first name and last name as the uh, user principal name. Um, if somebody else has the same first name and last name, obviously you're going to run into an issue there. So uh, one of the things that I did at one of the clients that I worked for was to put in a check there that would kind of iterate through and say, okay, uh, I, would, I would set up like a, a number counter variable. And um, and what it would do is, is it would check and say, okay, does that user exist? Okay, if so, then I'll add 
God, you know, John Doe 2, uh, John dot Doe 3, John dot Doe 4, until it finds one that works. Uh, it's not, not an ideal solution. You might be able to come up with something more elegant, um, you know, maybe using a middle name or, or uh, uh, some kind of, you know, cropping of the names or something like that. So, you know, if John Doe is already taken, maybe do J dot Doe or something like that and see if you can figure out things that way. It, it's one of those things that you, you'll you kind of have to figure out for yourself, especially, you know, for a small company, it's usually not that big a deal. But as you get a bigger company, you're going to get people that have the same first name and last name. And you're going to run into issues where, you know, that's going to cause a conflict when you're trying to create a new username through an automated process. Um, so you have to put in those kinds of checks to see, you know, has this user already been created? Has this user or, or does somebody already have a matching username? And so come up with some kind of uh, logic to alter that and, and you know, maybe do a certain number of tries. And then if it doesn't say, okay, spit out an error as part of the output, say, okay, I was not able to create this user because, you know, users with these names already exist. And then that might be the one-off that they'll have to go in and create manually afterwards. Um, so for that, we're going to, you know, add the user to the group. Um, then we're going to get the group details and it'll give you some information about the group itself. Then we're going to do get group members, which basically spits back out the list of users that are part of that group. Let's go ahead and test this. And there we go. Run that. Done. Zoom out a little bit here so we can see the output. You can see it's running now and running through. And there we go. So it's added to all those users, added all three users, got the group details. Um, so you can see for each of the users that comes out, uh, let's look at one of these here in particular. Uh, you just see the outputs that come back. You can see it gives you some information back about the user that was created. So say, hey, I created this user. And, you know, if you're going to do other things with that user, the important piece is that ID that it gives you back. So say, OK, I've created this user. Here's the ID of that user. Um, so we've got that for those. So if we look at the get group details and if we look at the outputs here, again, you're going to just going to see some information coming back. So it's saying, you know, uh, it's a default group for everyone in the network. Here's the name of that group, uh, the type of group. Uh, you know, if it has a, an email address associated with it, proxy addresses, all that kind of stuff that you information that you'll see about uh, that group in particular. And then for the last step here, get group members. We'll look at the raw output here. And you can see it comes back with a list of users. So I've got, you know, my two or uh, my default user here. And then the, here's the three new users that we created. So if we jump back over here to Azure, so you can see there weren't those users did not exist. We'll refresh, and boom, there's our three new users. Uh, and if we look at uh, you know one of these users in particular, and we can see the group memberships, and you can see it was added to the all company group. So uh, you know that's that's really you know all there is to it. Uh, it's, it's fairly simple, especially for these quick user setup tasks, um, things that you need to do. Uh, you know. Doing that a lot, a lot of initial setup that, you know, uh, an HR person would have to go in and create a ticket and, you know, that goes to the support group and the support group, you know, figures out, okay, what groups does this person need into and, and so on and so forth. Uh, you can automate a bunch of those processes, you know, because once a group is created, uh, you know, that's, uh, you know, those things don't tend to change very much in, in a corporate environment. So, you set up these processes, get those IDs, you set up your flow so that, okay, it comes in and maybe there's a list of the groups that that user is a part of. You can add that logic saying, okay, uh, I've added this user, get my user ID back. Here's the list of groups that, that user has to be a part of and automate all those processes. And then you can you know, send out an email at the end saying, uh, sending out an email to the manager uh, you know, who was assigned and say, okay, here's your new user. Here's that new user's information here. Here's the groups that they were assigned to. Excuse me. And then that manager can verify, okay, this was set up correctly. He was assigned to the right groups. If not, then 
you know, the manager can follow up and, and know immediately, okay, I need to make these adjustments to the creation of that user uh, and put in the, the appropriate tickets for that. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do to automate those processes uh, very quickly, very easily uh, through Power Automate and their connector to Ultra ID. And then, you know, that that's going to save you not all the time that you need to save, but, um, you know, depending on how uh, complicated and, and uh, uh you know, detailed you want to get there's a there's a whole lot of things that you can do you can you know uh you know that kicks off with the hr process at that new user and then that maybe that the, the flow automatically generates an email to support saying okay here's a new user here's their manager here's where they're assigned uh where they're going to be working and you know automatically create tickets to your it support system that's saying okay you need to issue a laptop send that laptop to the manager at this location but the manager has that laptop and it's ready to go day one. Uh, it makes the onboarding process so much more efficient, so much quicker and easier, and it can save days, if not weeks, of, of effort in getting that new user, that new employee up to speed so that they can be productive, hopefully day one, you know, but if not, then very quickly after that. Uh, so, you know, Power Automate is great for these kinds of things. It's what Power Automate's for. And this is one of the, the best ways to, uh, to automate those processes to make your life a whole lot easier and to, to, to make your company run a whole lot more smoothly than it does. Thank you.